Now, that's where it came from. And it was a moaning sound, like, uh, well, like somebody was dying or something. And it uh, came from there, huh? That's right. <sighs> okay, so you think I flipped. But I know what I heard. Look, kid, these ventilating ducts run from one end of the ship to the other, right? Well, sometimes the pressure in one compartment will be higher than the pressure in another compartment. Chief, don't you think I know all that? No, 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 wait. Now, when this happens, air rushes through the ducts and makes this kind of moaning sound. And that's what you heard, Kowalski, air and the ducts. I don't know. It, uh, well, it didn't sound like that. Well, you got a little excited, that's all. Let's go. Your watch is coming up. Okay, but I know what I heard. Yes. <laughs> Ski, wait for me. I tell you, Skipper, it was some kind of a laugh, a weird cackling laugh. Did you hear it too, Kowalski? Uh, no, sir, not then. I was already out in the corridor. But before that, I heard this moaning sound. That's when he called me, sir. It seemed to come from the ventilator grid. Kowalski, you're doing the sonar watch. Hi, sir. Uh, go ahead, Kowalski. That's all right. I suppose there's a good logical explanation for what we heard. Yeah, of course there is. Now, listen, Chief. If you hear anything more unusual, report to me personally, all right? Aye, aye, sir. More of those reports? Yeah. Hey, Chip, how long have we been running submerged this cruise? This is our fourth day submerged, our 24th day at sea. Why, sir? I wonder if the crew isn't getting edgy. Maybe they need shore leave. They always need shore leave. They'll be okay. Mm. Mr. Morton. What are you getting? Surface ship. 017 degrees relative range. Two five double O yards. Very well. Keep it on the screen. Right, sir. No problem? I don't think so. A surface ship almost dead ahead. That's funny. We haven't been tracking any surface vessels in this area. We've got one now. Sparks, there's a ship on the surface. It's within uh, 2,500 yards of us. Raise them and request an identification. Aye, aye, sir. A lone vessel, 150 miles from the nearest shipping lane. What do you make of it, Lee? I don't know. Skipper, that ship does not respond to our signal. Try it again. And keep trying until you get a response. Aye, sir. Bring us up to periscope deck. Aye, aye sir. 10 degree up bubble. Periscope depth, sir. centuries old. I still want to know who they are and where they came from. We could signal them with some of us. We'll have to. Take it up. All right, sir. Prepare to serve. Oh, thanks. I don't know how that square wriggle will react. 
to us. You just stand by to take us down in a hurry if we have to duck. We'll be ready. All right. Take us down fast. Bring it to a full stop. All stop. How's our trim? We're riding at 100 feet, dead stop. Trim satisfactory. Very well. Damage control. What's our condition? Damage control, sir. Full watertight integrity in all compartments. Those must have been old-fashioned cannonballs they were throwing at us. I'll ready the two forward torpedo tubes. Oh, what for? We'll blast that Hulk out of the water. Oh, we're not going to fire on her. She fired on us. I know, Chip, but I still want to know more about her. Control room. Uh, yes, Admiral. What's going on down there? What did we hit? Uh, nothing, Admiral. Something hit us. We've been attacked by a 200-year-old square rigger. A 200-year-old square... I'll be right down. What are you reading now? The ship hasn't moved, Skipper. She's still up there on the surface. going on. This is Nelson. Report your condition. Report! This, is, this, is, this isn't happening. It can't be. I must be dreaming. Uh, that must be it. I... I'm not here at all. I am asleep in my bunk. Dreaming is the only possible explanation. <laughs> Who is it? Where are you? Thank <laughs> you. 
tip. I don't suppose you can hear me either, huh? I didn't think you could. But what is all this? Speak up. I know you're in here. <laughs> oh, all right. I've had enough. Who is it? Uh, it's a comical picture you make. Stand in there. Your mouth open. Don't show yourself, I'll open fire. Look out! Back here! Uh, let it be enough of that. A shame it would be to mar these handsome walls of yours. All right, come out into the light where I can look at you. I look at me, Sissy. <laughs> Are you not afraid of the sight your eyes might behold? Step out into the light. Uh, he'll be putting away that pistol first. She changes position. Right, sir. As soon as the Admiral comes down here, we'll uh, find out what to do about that ship. At least she doesn't seem to have any modern weapons aboard her. I've been half expecting her to dump a load of depth charges on us. No, so have I. Lee. Lee. Admiral, we thought you were on your way to the control room. Is everything all right? It's all right, Leo. I'll be right there. Now, 
what is all this about being attacked by a 200-year-old square rigger? Well, I know it sounds strange, Admiral, but that's exactly what happened. Now, did you find anything, Chen? There's nothing in the registry list. Well, you must have missed it. Let me take a look. Oh, forget it, forget it. You won't find it. There hasn't been a square rigger in commission anywhere for at least a dozen years. Well, how do you explain the one that fired on us? Well, well I can't yet. Well, it's still on the radar. Take a look. What happened to you? That's what I like to know. Is um, that some kind of foam all over you? Yes, sir, it is. Well, what happened? Well, sir, I went to the aft tool locker to get this, this wrench. I'm uh, walking back in the corridor on my way back here, and uh, next thing I knew, I'm 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 I'm, I'm covered with foam. <laughs> oh, where did it come from? I don't know. I I, I never knew what hit me. Uh, one second I'm uh, I'm dry, and next second I'm. You better go blow it clean up. I right, sir. I, I don't know. Well, now, uh, how do you explain that? Hmm? Oh, oh. Well, well that, that might have been a, um, a leak in the reactor control system. Well, uh, check it out, Chip. All right. Now, uh, that's just one case. We've had a whole series of them. Crewmen hearing strange noises and uh, things like that. There might be a general case of jitters. Admiral, it wasn't a case of jitters that fired a broadside and nearly sank us. Have uh, they uh, made any other hostile moves? No, but that's probably because they don't carry depth charges. They have no way to reach us. No, oh, then I fail to see how they can hurt us, can you? Well, if they attacked us, they might attack an unarmed surface ship and sink it. We've got to do something about it. All right, all right. Have Sparks send out a general inquiry. See if anyone can give us information about such a ship. If, if you learn anything, you can call me in my cabin. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll be waiting there. <laughs> something. Well, what is it? It's uh, right there around the bend. Well, that's uh, that's what sprayed me, sir. That cylinder on the deck. Chief, are you sure you're all right? Oh, I'm feeling fine. That is, uh, I will when we find out who, who put it there in the first place. What cylinder? Well, it's right there. It's as plain as the... Would you care to point it out, Chief? It, it was there just a couple of seconds ago, sir. I... You, uh, you do believe me, don't you? Sure, Chief. Look, why don't you go get a uniform? But I tell you, I saw it. Say, show yourself and say it. All right, I'm waiting. 
good lad. Uh, it's proud of you, I am. Sit down, lad, sit down. Rest your weary bones. We've some talking to do, you and me. Ah, uh, that's better now, isn't it? I suppose you'll be asking who I am. Oh, that is a reasonable assumption. That is a proud name I bear, as you'll be the first to admit. I am himself, the Nelson, Captain Seamus O'Hara Nelson, your servant, sir. Ah, yes. Uh, Captain Nelson. I have heard of you. Oh, have you now? <laughs> that is just a small wonder. You, uh, you made a fortune in the China trade, uh, importing tea, wasn't it? Aye. I tea, tea it was. And uh, other heathen objects. What else do you know about me, lad? Well, that you were uh, my wealthiest ancestor and, and uh, you died at sea in the year 1822. Well, we'll not be speaking about that now. It is not one of my happiest recollections. Still and all, I have not done badly, you'll admit, in spite of that one unhappy circumstance you speak of. But enough of me. It's you I want to talk about. You've more than a bit of salt in your veins, lad, and you got it from nobody strange. Oh. All right, I, I love the sea, but uh, you didn't come here to tell me that. Uh, and that's a fact. What it came for was you. Me? Oh, what do you mean by that? What I mean, I, I mean what I say. You're coming with me now, away from this ship and onto my own. Well, thanks for the invitation, but I'm afraid I must respectfully decline. Oh, decline, is it? But you have not the right to decline, lad. It was not an invitation I issued. It was a command. Oh, oh, command. Well, in that case, I, uh, I don't decline. I refuse. <laughs> oh, a pinch of snuff. No, I never take it. I... You should, lad. You should. It's a fine thing it is for clearing the head. So, you refuse to come with me, do you realize what you'll be missing? No, and I don't care. Don't care, says he. Huh? I'll tell you the same. You and me, lad, we could live a life the likes of which you never even dreamed of. Bawdy, brawling life would it be. Sailing fast on the open sea, with a spanking breeze off our quarter, the sharp salt air in our lungs. And then, every now and again, we touch port. <laughs> and the sparks would fly for fair. <laughs> ah, the things I could teach you, lad. The things those eyes of yours could see. <laughs> well, I have work to do here and little enough time to do it. Time, is it? <laughs> time. Time is a zero and nothing. I'm offering you immortality. How? By killing me? Well, there would be uh, certain formalities involved. But think of the rewards, lad. I am thinking of them. My answer is still the same. Thank you, but uh, no. And what, what would you be doing here now? The work I've devoted my life to, here on my ship. Oh, your ship, huh? So that's it. Well, we shall see about that, my fine lad. Indeed, indeed we shall see. We, we checked out the reactor control system. It wasn't responsible for what happened to Chief Sharkey. Very well, Chip. But what was? <laughs> I wish I knew. Skipper. Take a look at this. She moved. Almost directly overhead, sir. I don't like this, Chip. Could be a coincidence. Without detection gear, she'd have no idea where we are. Maybe so. But who says she's without detection gear? Hit 
about a brace for crash. damage report from all hands. Get right on. How badly were hurt? I don't know yet. I knew there was something phony about that square rigger. She's carrying depth charges. That's not all she's carrying. What do you mean? Oh, nothing, nothing. Missile room, this is the captain. Missile room I. Is that you, chief? Yes, sir. I'm down here checking the damage. Are we able to fire missiles? Yes, sir. The tubes are clear and firing mechanisms are operative. Uh, good. Load all forward tubes with MS-1s and stand by to fire. Aye, right, sir. Well, what's the matter? You can't sink that ship. Why not? It's doing everything it can to sink us. I didn't say you shouldn't. I said you can't. With four heat-seeking torpedoes, we'll blow it sky high. Well, don't count on it. All right, men. Start loading. Any change in the position of the square rigger? No, sir. There she is. Riding on the surface directly above us. We've been pretty lucky, Lee. No structural damage. All controls operative. Good. Shall I get us underway? No. Not until we sink that ship up there. Missile room to control. Forward tubes loaded and ready for firing. Very well. Stand by the fire. Firing order will be one, three, two, four. One, three, two, four. Aye, sir. Standing by. Fire three. Three fired. Fire two. Two fired. Fire four. Four fired. Secure firing. Aye, sir. Chip. Count down from ten. Mark. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, in a couple of two. seconds. should be here. A hard man you are to convince, lad. Ah, it is a Nelson trait and a fine one, too, take it for all in all. Well, suppose you tell me what this is all about. Uh, what kind of parlor tricks are you playing? Parlor tricks, is it? And you and I witness to the greatest phenomenon that any living soul has been privileged to share. Why, lad, this has been the dream of many a lively mind. You're here, watching time stand still. Caught in a net, betwixt one second and the next. <sighs> Think of it, lad. The mastery of time, man's greatest enemy. In the span of a heartbeat, a man with this gift can accomplish a lifetime of work. And this gift is yours. 
if you have a will to have it for your own. In exchange for what? The same terms as I told you before. Join forces. Come aboard my ship. We'll roam the length and breadth of all the seven seas. Don't you see, lad? I'm offering you immortality. And a truly wondrous thing it can be, too. What about my men? Uh, let them sink to the bottom and forget them. They matter nothing to me, nor will they to you. Once you put your hand in mine. And what do you say now, huh? I offer you my hand. Will you not take it? No. I make you an offer in good faith, and you refuse it as lightly as all that. You'll be regretting this, my lad. Regretting it deeply and with all your heart. All right, I'll regret it. But my decision is final. Hm! Is it now? <laughs> Still and all, you are of my blood. And I can't find it in my heart to destroy you without giving you one last chance to repent and mend your ways. Well, you've tried twice to destroy us, and you've failed both times. We're stronger than you are, and you'll know it. I was toying with you like a cat with a mouse, but I'll toy no more. One hour you have to come to your senses. One hour, and then you and your whole blasted crew will go to a watery grave, and no power on earth can save you. One hour, me fine boy, oh. No more. Explosion Zero. Blows that ship to bits. I don't hear anything. I don't understand. Our HS ones never miss. They can't miss. Well, apparently these did. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some important work to do and very little time to do it in. Oh, by the way, Lee, you can raise us from the bottom now. We won't be attacked again for. Uh, for a while. Chief, what happened down here? I don't know, sir. I'm just checking it. You realize, of course, your torpedoes missed the target? Yeah, uh, yes, sir. I know. I, uh, I didn't hear an explosion. Yes, sir. How do you explain it? Well, all I know, sir, is if one of these babies is fired, it's got to hit. Four were fired with no hits. Well, there's only one way uh, that can happen. There was no target up there. But there was. We're still tracking it. There's just no way to explain it, sir. Are you sure those tubes didn't misfire? That I can guarantee. I heard every one of them when they were launched. You can't mistake that sound, Mr. Morton. Any torpedo man will tell you that. Tracking tapes indicate all four were released and headed directly for the target. See that, sir? I told you. I think I'll just have a look at those tubes. You don't even have to check, Mr. Morton. Those tubes are empty. You saw for yourself on the tracking tapes. Hmm. Satisfactory. All ahead, standard. All ahead, standard. Well, we're off the bottom. 
Edmund knew what he was talking about. How could he know? How could he? It's almost as if he could see into the future. Right, Sparks, I'll repeat it for you. Maritime Museum, Boston, Mass. Request all possible information on the career of Captain Seamus O'Hara Nelson, who died at sea in the year 1822. That's extremely urgent. Send me a decoded reply as soon as you receive it. Aye, aye, sir. Now, come in. Admiral, can I uh, see you for a couple of minutes? No. Yes, sure, Chief. Come and sit down. Thank you, sir. Sir, I, uh, I've been wondering. Mm. Cigarette? Thank you, sir. There are a couple of questions I'd like to ask you, and, uh... Mm -hmm. Right? Thank you, sir. All right. What's on your mind? Well, I don't know exactly. All I do know is that something... something peculiar is going on around here. Well, that's a fair statement. Go on. Well, the thing is, sir, if anyone has any answers to my questions, I figure it's you. Ah, I wish it were. But I'm afraid the shoe's on the other foot. Francis, I'd like you to, uh, to answer a question for me. Yes, sir, anything I can. Suppose someone offered you something that could prove more valuable to you than your wildest dreams, and all you had to do to get it was accept the offer. Oh? Mm. But, Francis, if you accept the offer, you might be hurting someone. As a matter of fact, hurting practically everyone who means anything to you. Well, then I just wouldn't do it. Ah, but it's not quite as simple as that. If you refuse, you could be endangering the lives of those very people you didn't want to hurt. Now, what then? Well, it's, uh... It's kind of different, sir, but, uh... Mm. Go on. Well, maybe this sounds a little corny, but uh, the way I see it, if uh, if you felt that taking this thing, whatever it is, wasn't right, then I just wouldn't take it, no matter what. A man's got to take a stand someplace, sir. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Chief. Oh, by the way, what about that question of yours? Oh, that's that's all right, sir. Some other time. Mm. It's still there, huh? Yes, sir. She seems to move right along with us. Now, how can a sailing ship go this fast? It can't. And yet it obviously is. Lee, Sparks just handed me this. It's a decoded message for the Admiral. Shall I take it up to him? It's marked confidential. No, Chip, I'll take it up myself. The old devil. What? Oh, nothing, Lee, nothing. Admiral, exactly how much do you know about all the things that have been happening to us? Well, what, what makes you think I know anything about it? I don't know. But I'm sure you know more about it than you're telling. Well, you think I'm engaged in some kind of a plot to, uh, to destroy us all? No, of course not. But you do have some information. And for the safety of the ship, I've got to know about it. Well, I'm sorry. I wish I could tell you more, but I can't. That message is part of it, isn't it? I'd like to see it. It's a confidential matter. Can you give me a word that it has nothing to do with the safety of this ship? No. No, I can't. Then I've got to read it. I'm sorry, I can't show it to you. I'm warning you, Admiral. If you're holding back anything that endangers this ship, I'll have to take steps of my own. I understand. I don't blame you. But I need a little time before you take those steps. Now, believe me, Lee, this is vital. All right, how much time? About 10 minutes. 
I'll be back in ten minutes. Is there uh, any indication of trouble down there? Negative, Skipper. Very well. Couldn't be any serious, but. Reactor room. Report your condition to the control room. Reactor room, sir. Condition normal, all units functioning. Very well. Keep me advised. Aye, aye, sir. Something's wrong. show you the meaning of power, my fine lad. And it's a lesson you won't be liking, I can promise you that. Oh, hold on, you've, you've been lying to me. All those fine words about two seafaring men adventuring around the world. They were lies. Nothing but lies. Lies. Lies indeed. I can crush you with a twist of my hand and I'll do it. To you or to any man who calls himself a liar. And I suggest you read this. <laughs> so your fine and noble sensibilities were shocked, were they not? <laughs> <coughs> Bloody shame, that! My noble ancestor. You didn't make your fortune trading tea, you made it trading slaves. And who are you to be sitting in judgment of what men do? Sure, I took my money where I found it, and a fine fat fortune it was too. You were the worst kind of scum, Captain. A slave trader. And you're paying for it now, aren't you? Doomed to sail the same ocean you disgraced. How dare you talk to me like that? Your own ancestor. A man that offered you his hand in friendship. Friendship? 
You didn't want my friendship. You wanted a scapegoat, someone of your own blood, to serve out the rest of your penance so you could find peace after all these years. That's what you needed me for, that and nothing else. I'll hear no more. I'll hear no more of this. Go ahead, Captain, do your worst. Kill us all, add another page to your list of crimes. Ah, but lad, you know I couldn't do that without your help. You're a wiser man than I knew. What you said was true enough. With you doing my penance for me, I could have been truly free again. Although the things that I promised you, the sailing and the brawling and all that, that did sound wonderful good, didn't it? Huh? <laughs> if things had been just a, just a little bit different, and no penance to be paid, mind you, uh, we could have had a time for ourselves, Laird, you and me. We truly could. But then, another day. Not up there anymore. I'm not surprised. What's going on? One minute we're completely out of control, diving for the bottom, and the next minute everything's working and we're on an even keel. That's uh, remarkable, isn't it? Well, what's that? Just an old snuff box. Uh, Admiral, is there a... Uh... Something about all this you're not telling me. 